Holly Tree, Ruger 2245, bolt, quartz and trigger, magazine safety gone bye bye. Got the bolt release, I took the detent out of it, all those mods. It's been 100% reliable, right? Yes. With bulk ammo, no less. Yeah, cheap stuff. There's an awesome pack light receiver barrel on a Ruger 2245 Mark III. This gun belongs to Sadly Missing. Ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be putting in a Mark II trigger kit from Volkortzen in here in the workshop tonight. Uh, why a Mark II in a Mark III pistol? Uh, a couple reasons. We want to get rid of that stupid magazine disconnect, i.e. safety. We'll be getting rid of that so the magazines will drop freely. This is my lower. By the way, Allie the Mountain Dog is with us in the shop. She heard the whistle. Thought it was mountain time. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, and this is the grip mod. I still have to make a separate video on this. I'll tell you guys about it later on. But right now, if we have time, we may do that later. Right now, we're just going to be putting this in to his pistol. Uh, we'll be showing you the process as we go. I'll probably make some mistakes, screw things up, have to reference, I don't know, the manual. <laughs> yeah, I've done that before because uh, I don't do it frequently enough. Uh, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, while we're doing this, we're also going to take out the ball detent on the bolt release. And that way, uh, all you have to do is rack your bolt backwards without having to manipulate the front side. And it'll just rack a new round in with the new magazine, assuming it's locked open uh, last shot. Okay, and that's the mod. Let's get going. Sadly missing camera work. I hate that magazine safety in there. Oh, that is stupid. For the takedown or put back together process, it's just a hassle. By the way, guys, you saw I take that down. I just use a Victorinox Cadet Swiss Army knife, the flat blade, pop it out just like you saw. It works great. There's all kinds of different techniques. And I apologize if I don't use your technique for taking down the gun. Then we're going to take the barrel off. Once upon a time, before I started installing these, guys were telling me, well, the pack lights really install hard on the polymer receivers of the 2245s. I have not found that to be the case. Uh, this one slides right on. This is my barrel. It slides right on, and it fits tight, and it's very accurate. You guys have seen it lots in shooting already, proven. Um, but I don't find it to be a problem at all. This is where we're going to concentrate all our work in the trigger group. We're going to remove all the stock components. And then we're going to slam in the Mark II, not Mark III components. What you want to do, uh, and there's some really good online resources if you guys get lost. Um, I'll do my best showing you how my, my technique works. But take a few minutes and look at the internals of how they're arranged. All this stuff, the trigger bar, and especially the pins and the orientation uh, of these pins. Because some will be notched and they'll have spring detents on them. Like this one, if you look right here, let me... Uh, so then let me get my Prion 2 so those guys can see. Only the most expensive lighting. Okay, you see that detent there? So that has a groove on the left side. You want to put it in that orientation. Okay, hopefully I'll remember how to do that during the takedown. <laughs> so first things first, we're going to pop those pins out, and then we're going to put them back in. Uh, we are going to use our sear spring, the stock sear spring. And there are some parts in here we will not use because they're more suited to a Mark II not a 2245. I'll show you those here in a sec. Okay, check this out dudes. See that? The groove is right here. Take that down. And there's probably some 2245 gurus out there that are like, dude, that's not the way you do it. Trust me, it'll work the way I'm doing it. I'm just going to stack them in the order they go in the gun. This is the right, this is the left. That'll be important later on. This pin, if I'm not mistaken, has to come out from this side. Put this on block here. This is kind of trick. I like this. Am I using it right? That's it. Oh, you know what? I gotta pop that spring out. Oh, gotcha. Okay. In order to remove that pin, I've gotta pop that spring out. Okay. See how I did that? The spring is out of this groove now, right here. And then you, once that's done, you should be able to remove that pin. There we go. See that? Okay, and so we're going in order. So this one's going to be on the top. It's the bigger one. And then I'm going to use my punch pin and hold all the fire control components right there. Okay, so that one goes right there. Okay, now I'm going to leave my punch in there. Take out my trigger. I might have to take all this out. I forget exactly the order that I do this stuff in, but uh, we'll figure it out. 
Here's the stock hammer, trigger bar, and trigger. Almost all this is going to get replaced with the Volkortz and group, and it just results in just a superb trigger pull. Absolutely awesome. Um, the trigger bar is going to be reused, of course. This is your magazine disconnect crap. Okay, we're going to get rid of all of this. We're going to use another hammer too. We're going to use the Volkortz hammer, so these parts are not used. Now, some guys uh, have different ways of making up for this notch. Okay, they have like washers and different stuff they can do. I like doing things the right way whenever I can. Sadly, I know you're like that huge. Mm -hmm. So I just bought from Brownells a Mark II bushing, hammer bushing, that's going to go in and solve the lack of width since we take this part out. Okay, so we're going to have Mark II internals, magazine, safety, gone. Opening the trigger kit now. How you doing, Dogness? Is she down there? Chilling? She is resting. <laughs> all right. All right, so sometimes, I'll be honest with you, I get all discombobulated with the way this exactly goes in. So make sure you don't mix up your Volcorts and parts. There goes the safety right there. Uh, with your stock parts. So just, I'm just going to keep them on this side of the bench. Here's the stuff you're not going to use for a 2245. These things right here. I think you do use them for a Mark II. Or, yeah, there's a Mark II kit. So you can discard these, give them to a buddy who has it. There's an extended bolt release, I believe. Um, I'm not going to use it. So I'm going to put that over here. Here's the Volkorts and Hammer. Some guys are critical on the lightened hammer, saying that it has a lightened mass. And for rimfire that needs a good whack, maybe not the best hammer. I kind of tend to agree with that school of thought. I don't know if lock time is a really important criti or critical factor in a rim fire. I haven't had ignition issues though putting mine in. It's been pretty darn good. Okay, so we're going to use the Volkorts and Hammer. There's a Volkorts and Sear. It's polished. All your work is done for you. That's a part we're using. Here comes the trigger from Volkorts and. Nothing fancy. How expensive is this, is this kit? Um, like a lot of things in life, it's not super cheap. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. Uh, you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. Um, I will tell you this. Terry Gardner at Impact Guns does a great trigger drop job on your 2245, your Mark II, your Mark III. It is, however, not as, mm, not as I wouldn't say crisp. It's, when he does his trigger job, the trigger comes a little bit further back in the trigger um, guard. And then more importantly, I like this trigger. I want to get rid of this one. Uh, it's a second type of cool thing, guys. That's all I'm saying. I just like Volcorps and stuff. I've been shooting them since the early 90s. I love their stuff. Okay, so here we're going to use the plunger and the spring. I hope I didn't just screw those up. See, I told you not to mix these parts up, and I just did. That's the dirty one, so that's the stock one. And here comes the plunger spring. The nomenclature, if I get these wrong, excuse me. Oh, you know what, before we do that, sadly, we're going to take, uh, this is the over-travel screw, screw here. Hmm. This is a pre-travel screw. We're going to back both of those out, and we're going to shoot it with brake cleaner. And the reason why is because you absolutely positively have to lock tight this stuff. If you don't, um, you're going to have issues. You're going to That screw is going to back out on you. Both, I've, I've installed three kits of these. This is my third and they're always loose and Loctite is absolutely essential. What color Loctite? I would say blue would be fine. That's what I use in mine. I haven't had a problem with it yet. Um, red, when you have such a delicate piece, I probably would not recommend doing that. So This one's a little bit harder to get to. Uh, it's a lot harder to get to, I'll tell you, when, the, when it's in the gun because you're going to be using your bent portion and just doing like a 90 degree you know, turn like this every time. We are in the sadly missing bunker right now in Mission Spec Camo Workshop, by the way. We just, we just finished a Lieutenant Colonel's slide who wanted it in combat gray. I, it's right behind you on the table back there. So Check this out. This is kind of cool. This is off an MP9. Uh huh. That looks cool. That's Mission Spec Camo dura coating that after bead blasting. Yes. Cool, and he wanted the whole thing done inside too, huh? Yeah, he did. All right, that is very good looking. Love it. Good choice. Gray is cool looking. Okay, here comes our brake cleaner. Do you have a shop towel or something I can shoot it on? 
Just whatever you want out of there. I was going to have Last Suspect do the filming, but he's always doing homework these days. <laughs> I was going to bring this gun completed for you. Okay, um, do you need to degrease to do Loctite? I don't know. I like doing things right. I don't like taking shortcuts, and I have Loctited things that I didn't degrease, and they came loose. Do you have a compressor? I do. Right behind you. Orange hose. Okay, okay that's all I need. Cool. Good enough. Okay, it's kind of nice too. I have mine here, and so we have a reference gun in case we get lost. <laughs> <laughs> which has happened. Do you have blue Loctite? I do. Or gun Loctite of pick which. There's red and blue right there. That's red, blue. Always shake your Loctite up good. Now, sadly, what I'm going to do on your. Your over travel is I'm going to put it in the position of mine. Okay. And guys, if you use Loctite, and again, your your technique may vary. Whoever's finding this video, um, understood. But I know my techniques work because I've been using them for like a long time. I'm going to put them in the position I have mine. If you don't like it, you can move it. Okay. That's again why we use blue Loctite. So I have it on the trigger face. Mine's protruding just a little bit. And well, you can look at mine right here. That one's been adjusted. You can see my over travel is protruding just a little bit here. Mm -hmm. You might want to keep that light on. Does okay. it look better with the light or no? It does, unless I get too close and it blows out. Okay. So, perfect, about right there. So what I'm going to do right about here, and this will take overnight to dry, guys. Okay. So if you're putting this trigger kit in and you're like, I'm going to go shoot with my friends, um, you, might have, you might have some movement on your screws here. Okay. Here comes the pre-travel. Now if you guys don't know what this does is over travel dictates how far back in the trigger guard essentially the trigger will move. Pre-travel kinda adjusts the take up on the trigger. And again I'm not a gunsmith so if I don't say your terminology sorry. Kind of. There we go. <laughs> it's kind of mean really I don't care. What you That's kinda what I mean yeah, actually. Well. Yeah I don't really care. Sadly, he's laughing because he knows exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. I guarantee you this way will work. See, this is a bugger. They have this kind of drilled in at an angle right here. This is the right way to do it, though. Before you put the trigger in, degrease, Loctite it. A little bit more of an angle on that. And I put a lot of blue Loctite on there. I have found, too, that when that dries, like I said earlier, you still can adjust it and it mm -hmm. will stay pretty stiff on it, on you but use it liberally for the pre-travel screw which I'm putting in here I'm going to adjust it again to where mine is you can see about how deep mine is in there mm -hmm. that's where I'm going and then once we get it all together we will adjust it if we need to is you can actually, if you don't like that sticking out from your trigger face like mine is right there, if you want to mm. show them, you can actually take that out and the trigger, once I put the pre-travel screw, or the over-travel screw in, and you can grind it. Mm. But you got to do it while it's in the trigger because um, you want to unscrew it afterwards to make sure that it has clean threads. So you can put it back in. If you do it out of the trigger, you're going to have some issues, I believe. But it hasn't bothered you. Mm -mm. I haven't noticed it, and I'm usually shooting with gloves. If shoot with it, and you can always change it afterwards. Yeah. Uh, if you think it's going to bother you now, this is the time to change it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and let me put this in by way of reference so we can tell guys what we're talking about. Yep. Uh, this goes like this. If I was more practice at this, I could put it in within 10 minutes. I bet guys who do this all the time are just slamming fast. Okay, so this is what I was trying to say earlier. I don't know if I edited it or not. If you don't like that right here uh, sticking out, this is the time to fix it. So what you could do is grind the back portion on your wheel. Just take, I don't know, a millimeter off, two millimeters, and then unscrew it. That way you realign the threads in case you ever need to take it out. You don't want to do it out of the trigger because then you just jacked up all your threads and good luck trying to get it back in. It won't work. Do you have any preference what you want to do? You want to just leave it like that for now? Um, yeah, I don't think that's going to bug me. 
Okay, and guys will say, well, can you grind it down from the front? Um, yeah, you probably can, but I, I don't you're recommend done, that. Yeah. Yeah. Then you're done. It's like, well, okay. you still have enough depth in here, yeah. but I just don't like the idea that I'm ruining my depth. That's oh, not the gotcha. side I'm going to grind. That's bush league. That's not the way you want to do things. If you're going to do them, do them right or don't do them at all. Okay, so there's our over travel, pre travel screw put in. And then, you got any slip 2000? Oh, ask and you shall receive. I, while I have the gun down, I'm just going to put a little bit of lube on this and key bearing points. Some type of synthetic CLP like slip, which is a great lubricant. Okay, and then. You know, guys will say, do you lubricate that spring? I just put a little bit on it is all. And we're approaching a gotcha in the installation that I want you guys to be aware of. The gotcha is this. See that plunger for the trigger bar or the trigger plunger? Be careful because you can pop that thing out. It's going to go flying in your shop and you won't find yeah, it. Yeah, take about three weeks to look for it. Yeah, so here's what I do. After I've lubricated it, I'm going to take it out. I'm not putting it until the final stage. I'm just going to leave this. Like that, right there. Smart, smart, smart. Okay, and then we'll put that I in here. I can't tell you how many uh, times I've had to search the entire shop for a <laughs> knife pin. You and me both. You and me both. All right, so if we look in here, this is a sear spring. In here, y'all, that's going to stay. We're not changing it. Now we have to drift out the sear spring pin. And I forget which direction. It doesn't matter. So I'm just... Oh, and check this out. While I do this, I'm going to leave that punch in there. Oh, and I forgot which side that went on. <laughs> I think it's on this side because mm -hmm. it catches a notch with the sear spring itself. I think that's right. So those are aligned right there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is put in the Volkortz and trigger and look how the stock one is aligned. All I'm going to do is turn it and align it just like that. See how it's exactly the same? Now I need a pair of sharp nose pliers. Pull out my punch. I'm not taking my, my stock sear spring out. There's really no need to do that. And I'm just going to drop that sear out or grab it. But remember the orientation. I'm just going to place it on my workbench. Remember my orientation. Again, there's online resources. If you get lost, you screw it up. There's some guys that have some good pictures for the Ruger that uh, are a lot more knowledgeable than I am on it. Okay, and here comes the sear from Volkortzen. But nothing fancy will using the stock sear spring change or worsen the, the trigger pull? The answer is no, it will not. Not my experience. Voila. Now I'm going to bring my sear uh, cross pin back in. Okay. And it comes. Notice I never took out that punch. It's going to make your life a lot easier. I never took out my sear spring. That's going to make your life easier. Now, if you have another 2245, you can see the relationship of the components and I think I have my sear spring on the wrong side. I do. See this? There's a long leg of the sear spring how it's back in the notch of the pin and mine's forward. That's not how it should go. So I need to back my pin out and put this on the back side of it. That gives tension to the sear. If I'm not mistaken. I probably am. Okay. And I gotta make sure that that sear spring's on that notch. It is. See that? Okay, there's the notch. There's the sear spring. Hopefully you guys can see that. That's correct. And then when we tension the sear spring, there should be resistance towards the forward part. I believe that's correctly installed. Okay, while we're here, by the way, we're going to take the detent out. Here you go. We're going to take the detent out of his bolt release. That way it'll drop all by itself. This is your bolt release. Just wiggle it out. And there goes the detent all by itself. It was right here. Okay, so that's gone. So we'll just place that aside. And now it's a bolt release. Now there's other mods out there I think I've heard about that guys say, well, you can install a spring. So even if the gun's upside down, um, you can still release the bolt. This is a gravity modification here. This is fine for me. There we go. Okay, so there's your bolt release installed without the detent pin. And now the hammer. So we're going to thread the fire control groups. Let me put my trigger in first. Here comes my Volkortz and trigger with the screws installed, trigger bar coming in. I'll install that next. Notice this spring right here. See that spring? It's going to capture that notch right here. 
Okay. Okay, there it is. Okay, and this is a trigger pivot pin. You should see it catching the notch right here. Just a second, let's get that Yeah, better. feel free to get in there so they can see it. Yep, yep. The spring, it's locked in. That way that you can see the pivot, the pin does not push out readily. Okay, now we're gonna break open our Mark II bearing. And again, there's you don't have to go this route. You can build washers to take the place of that magazine safety mechanism. I just do it this way. These are pretty inexpensive too for what you're getting. I just throw a little bit of lube on there. This is a Mark II hammer bushing for Ruger pistols. This kit also will work in regular Mark IIs, of course. And then this is where I always get confused. I gotta look at the orientation of the hammer. Just like so. Here comes my hammer bushing. Like so. Just a little bit of lube. I'm putting more than I really want in there. And I think we need to pivot that sear forward so the safety catches it as well. So this is a little bit tricky if I recollect correctly. Get out of the way, trigger bar. probably be editing this heavily so it's not super boring. All right, so we just spent some time putting these back together. I had it jacked up. The long leg of the sear spring should be behind should be behind this pin. It's going to capture in this groove. Okay, I had it behind that one. That's incorrect. That's the sear pin. It should be behind the hammer pin. If I'm getting the names right, if I don't, sorry. There's a sear in its forward position being captured by the safety and then the pins behind in the rearward position on this pin. This is the orientation of the parts you want. Okay, a little bit tricky getting them all set, kind of jacked up actually. I've done it wrong off camera, finally got it right. And then don't forget <laughs> to put your spring and plunger in under the trigger bar. That's an easy miss. You'll have it all together going, yeah, finally done, and you forgot it. Okay, and notice the flat portion of this goes against the top of that, not the angled portion. And it goes on the right side, not the left side. This is the orientation you want. Okay, and with that, we're ready to install our Volkortz and hammer. Slot in the back, strut in the back, flat face forward, Mark II bushing. You can use a Mark III if you want, or whatever, if you want to keep that magazine safety in. I don't know why you would. And then uh, install it like this. Lift that trigger bar out. And it goes. And then stop for a second and go, do I have all the parts in? Yeah, I got that in. That's behind the spring. That looks right. And then if you want, you can use your punch. I usually like a Glock tool. It works so good for so many bushings or for pins and stuff. This will work too. It's about the right size. Just kind of wiggling it to line it up. And I'm not doing a very good job of it. There it goes. Okay, and then I just push it until this clips, listen. Then you can hear that pin pop into the, not the pin, but the spring leg pop into the slot. And we push on this, and it's captured. Full Quartzen Mark II trigger job complete. Detent taken out of the bolt release. We're ready for reassembly. And test firing. And the cool thing about getting rid of that too, guys, is now I don't have to use a magazine for reassembly and assembly on the, on the 2245. Those days are gone. You will love that. A little bit of lube on my, my bolt pin right here. Bolt comes in. A little bit of lube on that. Not a ton. How often do you clean your 2245? Nothing fancy. It just depends. Uh, I do like it, you know, reliable. Do, I don't know if you saw that, but I pulled the trigger to lower the hammer so I can put the bolt in. And then I'll pull it again to put it in its forwardmost position, like so. Maybe I'll push on a little bit. Now see the, the strut that goes in the main spring? It's like loose. I've shown you this in my 2245 review. 
you'll know if this is lined up because it should go right in to the bolt with a little bit of pushing, a little bit of pushing is normal like that, see how it pops through the top and it's capturing that, it should be all the way in then I open this bad boy up right here and then what I do, my technique to capture that is I'll hold it at like a 45 degree angle and I'll push and if you have resistance, see how I have resistance here? You've captured it. So, done. Awesome! Check that out, sadly. Full Corton, trigger job complete, sadly missing, it's wow. 2245. I love that. <laughs> cool. You want to test fire? We do. I'll go grab a can and a. Roger that. AWC Archangel riding up front on Sadly Missing's 2245, now wearing Volkortsen Mark II trigger job. No trigger job is complete until you've test fired it. We're going to pay special attention to the position of the over travel and the pre travel there, sadly. Gotcha. Light it up. Shooting into a bullet trap for testing purposes. Excellent. Light it up. Sadly missing. Good accuracy, too. What you think? I love it. You need to change anything? No, on those no. The overdrive feels perfect. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm happy. Okay, that uh, blue Loctite's going to dry. You can change it if you need to. And that's the trigger job. Vol Quartzen. Mark II components now in his 2245. The magazine disconnect. By the way, pop your mag. Go ahead and pop your magazine. Watch how it just falls out. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Just let it drop. Oh. Done. There's no finger resting on it oh, to keep it in. Lovely. And then pop your bolt back. It'll catch. And then pop your mag out. And now, just release your ears on your bolt, and you'll see it'll. You don't have to fool with that oh, anymore because we took the D10 out. So that. just a couple little minor modifications we made along the way. So there you have it. Thanks, sadly. Hey, thank you. Blast. Thanks for your work. Good times. By the way, Mission Spec Camel is still going strong. Look at that sliding out. Check it out on the right side of my channel page. You see all the specifics. Nothing fancy. Sadly, missing. There's my fanny pack as always. Signing off. See you. Ninety-nine.